Dick. You're fired. Nani? Horikoshi right now is overloading me with the amount of cuteness exuding from Eri's character in this week's latest chapter. She is so freaking adorable. Just getting to see her taking her tour through the UA grounds, going to each individual department, dressed in normal clothing. She is out of those rags that we've seen her in for so long, and she is clinging to Muriel's leg the entire time. She is so nervous. She is so innocent and pure. I am just hoping nothing bad comes of her character, but there is that thought in the back of my mind that is still uneasy about what could possibly transpire during the culture festival. But I'm hoping nothing bad comes of her, and I am really looking forward to that one moment when she genuinely smiles for the very first time. It's going to be such a good moment, but this was a nice chapter to have on a very dark and depressing Friday as it is raining. It's terrible outside. Really enjoyed this week's chapter, guys. But how is your day going, guys? We're talking about manga chapter 173 of My Hero Academia, and this week's title is the same one as last week's, just as long. The most enjoyable time is preparing for the culture festival Part two. If next week we get a part three, it's gonna round out the preparing trilogy. But overall, this week's chapter was very simple and very straightforward because it centers around Mirio and Deku giving Eri a tour through the many departments of UA, allowing her to meet all these new people, grow accustomed to the environments that when she arrives at the culture festival, it's not this huge culture shock to her system. And also they're doing this to try to avoid any accident with her quirk as much as possible. But going through the other classes and departments and seeing what they have planned for the upcoming festival has me very, very excited. Specifically, Class B in particular. Their idea of a fantasy play, I love that overall idea. The title of their play is such a good reference to so many good franchises. Horikoshi is such a nerd and I love him for that, so I am super excited for what Class B has planned. But as we go through the other departments, we learn of this miscongeniality pageant, so we have some sexy moments in this chapter as well. And we even have two characters make a reappearance into the story, and I am super glad to see them in this chapter, but the most surprising aspect of this week's latest chapter comes from the ending cliffhanger when we have Mina walk up to Deku in a suit and tie, rocking them shades, put her hand on his shoulder, and just says, Deku, you're fired. She Donald Trumped Deku. You're fired. Sorry, Deku, I'm going to make the dance squad great again. So I am very curious to see what was the reason for Mina firing Deku from the dance squad, but I am super excited just to dive more into this chapter, talk all about those cute, sexy, and enjoyable moments from this week's latest chapter. So let's just start right at the very beginning where we see the band, the dance, and the stage teams. They've been at it for a week right now as they've been practicing and planning out their live performance. And with the band, we see Bakugo yelling as usual, as Bakugo tends to do, but within that one panel, I notice a very unique detail that Horikoshi threw in there. The band is practicing to the beat of a metronome. And no, I am not talking about the Pokemon move. Drowsy, use your metronome! Bands tend to use metronomes just to stay in time with their music, so just as a music fan, seeing Horikoshi throw that small detail in there, I really did enjoy that. And then we move on to the dance squad as Deku is being yelled at by Mina because he's starting to rock out instead of to pop and lock. And this is kind of like a very funny Japanese joke because L's and R's don't really get distinguished all too well within Japanese. So when Mina is saying, let's time to lock up, like Deku's like, oh, we got a rock? And he's probably like headbanging or something. So I got a really good laugh just thinking about that in my head. And the stage team is hard at work coming up with ideas to build up the overall overall atmosphere while the band and the dance teams perform on their stage. So everybody is hard at work for the past week practicing and coming up with ideas, but all of this kind of gets pushed to the side once Mirio and Eri show up. And when I reach this particular panel of Eri, my heart basically melted. Eri within this panel has a cuteness level of over 9,000. It's over 9,000! What 9,000? 
There's no way that could be right. Horikoshi is killing me with Aerie's cuteness, and I don't mind in the slightest. But besides the cuteness exuding from that one panel, it's also hilarious all at the same time because we see Mirio trying to make this moment extra funny. So we see him pushing his ass through the bushes as he is screaming the line, the peach is ripe. I love that Mirio has not lost his sense of humor ever since losing his quirk. That is just really nice to see within this. But also what adds on to the hilarious moments of this chapter is that we even have a running gag where we see Ojiro and a few other students later on in this chapter looking at Eri, looking to Mirio and being like, wait a minute, is this Mirio's child? What's going on here right now? So I really do like that that is like the running gag between Mirio and Eri in this week's chapter. But for the love of God, keep Mineta far away from Eri as humanly possible. But when I read Mineta's dialogue where he stated to Eri, I'm looking forward to meeting you again in 10 years. I was like, no, Mineta, you do not get that right. Eri is too innocent and pure for your dirty mind. And don't get me wrong, I really do like Mineta's character just with the hilarious moments with his perverted nature that he brings to the story. But when it comes to Eri, that's where I'm drawing the line. So keep Eri and Mineta far away from each other as humanly possible. So from this point moving forward, this is when Mirio and Deku are giving Eri the grandiose tour of UA as they go through each individual department, getting Eri more accustomed with the amount of people that she should expect to see once she actually comes to the culture festival. And the overall feeling that I'm getting, at least from this particular panel alone, is that UA is almost turned into Hollywood studios. It seems like it's a movie production, like the back lot to some movie set where you have these props, people are building stuff, everyone's running around, and I really do like that that is the overall aesthetic that the preparation for the culture festival is giving off, at least to me. So the first stop on Aerie's tour is with Class B, and we see Tetsu Tetsu, we see Awase, the guy with the headband, and of course we see everybody's favorite Class B student, Monoma. And Monoma is just being Monoma, running his mouth, just constantly antagonizing Deku and the rest of Class A, just basically saying, Class B, we're way better than Class A. So Monoma really hasn't changed, and he starts saying how their play is going to basically outdo anything Class A does. And I'm not gonna lie, their play fantasy idea is awesome. I would pay money to see their play, and the title alone has so many references to different franchises. Romeo and Juliet and the Prisoner of Azkaban, The Return of the Kings. Not only do you have Shakespeare, but you have Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter thrown in there. That right there is a great title, and I would love to see this play. And just looking at the poster, or at least like the panel of what feels like a poster, it is just awesome. Like you see the pony girl on the back who basically looks like the hippogriff from The Prisoner of Azkaban. That is a very nice detail thrown in there, Horikoshi. I really do like that. But Monoma just continues to run his mouth, and even though Kendo is not present to basically rein him in, Owase, the guy with the headband, just smacks him over the head with some two by four, and he's like, sorry, Kendo isn't here right now, which means Monoma, like the reins just basically got loose there for a minute. And it makes you wonder, like, wait a minute, how come Kendo isn't working with Class B to prepare for this play? And the whole reason that she is not here is because she is preparing for the Miss Congeniality Miss Contest, this beauty pageant that she is being forced to do against her will. And this is when the sexiness of this chapter gets bumped up a notch because Deku has no idea what this Miss Con pageant actually is. And Mirio's like, don't worry, let's go talk to somebody I know that is competing in it this year that can explain it to us and just how it works. And we end up running back into Hado Najiri, who apparently was the second place winner last year in the pageant. And I can see why, because my God, she looks amazing in this week's latest chapter. Horikoshi did not skip on the details when it came to drawing Hado, and specifically in these two panels. She looks amazing. Even Deku is getting very nervous just being around Hado because he's looking at her and he's like, yeah, I, I get it. Her head, her face, and her proportions, I understand why she got second place. But you hear second place and you're like, wait a minute. Who beat out Hado? Who was the first place winner of the contest last year? And we end up getting this one panel showing us the winner. Someone from the support team going by the name of the dazzling Zaki Babimi. And I ain't gonna lie, 
I ain't impressed just with this one panel. This person, I would honestly put Hado above this person. I think Hado should have been the winner of last year's beauty pageant. But Hado is driven and determined to win the pageant this year. She's telling everybody, I'm going to do my best guys. I'm going to try to win. And she's even getting some help from Sun Eater to prepare for the pageant, which was very cool to see. We had our big three in this section. I really enjoyed that. Though it was brief, I still really enjoyed it. But we move away from this section and we go into our next apartment, which is the support course, where we get the return of Hatsume Mei. And Hatsume is tinkering around with all of her babies, making sure that they are in top physical form for the culture festival, because this is a bigger opportunity for her than the sports festival was, which I find to be very, very fascinating because all these companies are going to swarm the culture festival looking at the support department and Hatsume is going to basically clean house. I just know it. Her inventions are so cool and she is even working on like baby number 202, this gigantic robot mech suit has a very cool design, but unfortunately it still needs some work because it ends up exploding during the ending of this section and Deku's like, all right, Eri, we gotta go right now. So we had a brief moment with Hatsume Mei and we had an even briefer moment. We had this brief little cameo of seeing Shinzo working within the general education department. And I can already see all the Shinzo fanboys and fangirls screaming at the top of the lungs being like, guys, he's back. He showed up in this week's chapter. And though it was very, very brief, I have a feeling we will be seeing more of him once the culture festival actually starts. So to all the Shinzo fans, me included, I think we will be seeing more of him very, very soon. So after all of the excitement and all of the explosions, Mirio and Deku take Eri to Lunch Rush's cafeteria to decompress, to give her a drink of water, and they just ask her, how do you feel about this overall situation? Are you excited about going to the culture festival? Will you be able to handle it? And Eri's like, I don't really know, but I see all these people trying their hardest to do all these things, and I want to see how that all plays out, but she doesn't understand the emotion that she is feeling right now. And then we end up kind of getting interrupted by President Nezu and Midnight, who are also in the cafeteria, where Nezu's like, well, that feeling you have is of excitement. And the next shot we see of Nezu is he is just devouring a piece of cheese. And all I can say is if he was good friends with Aoyama, he would have an unlimited supply of cheese to work with. But the next section we dive into gives us more background on what has been going on behind the scenes in terms of building up the security for the culture festival. We have this flashback between Nezu and the commissioner general of the police, where the police have the stance of, we need to downgrade this culture festival as much as possible. We can't have this grand event taking place while the state of the villains out in the world is worse than it has ever been. We need to seclude these students, raise them up, and eventually, you know, prepare them for the threat that is out there. But the points that Nezu kind of brings up, I definitely agree with because even though it is dark times out there, you can't let those dark times control your future. You need to allow these kids to decompress, to de-stress and have some fun moments. That way when it does come down to, you know, to get serious and to go out there and to fight villains, they're not going to be all that worried. So I agree with Nezu, it's like, no, we're going through with this culture festival because this is what the students need right now. But UA right now is on a very tight leash in the public eye because if UA suffers another security threat where a villain is able to infiltrate through their security system, the public is going to lose all faith, not only in UA, but the hero society as a whole. And as they go through what they've done to beef up their security and that if alarms do in fact end up going off, that they're going to suspend all the events of the festival and just evacuate the entire Entire school, that's all good and all, and even adding Hound Dog into the mix where he's going to basically go around the school premise and with his dog quirk ability, be able to sniff out any threats. I'm glad they're taking the precautions, but still with La Brava and Gentle in the wind right now and them, you know, saying that they're going to try to infiltrate the culture festival, it's going to happen and they're going to get through that security system. It's just how and when they plan to do it. And if it ends up becoming worse, just from this situation, I'm really curious to see how Horikoshi is going to handle this overall situation because the public, if this ends up happening, if a villain ends up getting through their security system, the faith that the public has in UA and the Hero Society as a whole will be worse than it has ever been. So here's the hope in that this culture festival goes off without a hitch. But the last section to talk about at the very ending of this chapter, Deku ends up getting the question asked by Eri. It's like, what is your class going to perform at the culture festival? And Deku's like, oh, we're doing this music and 
dance performance. So I'm really hoping that you can come to the festival area because we're going to do our best to make sure that everybody has a fun time and Deku states to Ari, I'm doing all of this that way I can make sure that you also have a fun time at the festival. So everything right now is looking good. Everybody's preparing for the festival. Everything's on the up and up. But then on the very last page, it all comes crashing down. We have Mina strolling up in this suit and tie, rocking them shades and walks up to Deku, puts her hands on his shoulder and basically Donald Trump's him. Basically says, Deku, you're fired. I'm sorry, you were a great asset to this dance squad, but I'm sorry, I need to make the dance squad great again. What is going on right here? Like, why is Mina firing Deku from the dance squad? I am very curious to see what is the reason for this. Is it because he might just be a bad dancer or is it another reason entirely? So this cliffhanger has me a little bit intrigued as to what is the reason for Deku's firing. But that is the ending of chapter 173, guys. Very enjoyable chapter, had some cute moments, some sexy moments, and we got to see Hatsume Mei and Shinzo appear in this chapter. That right there is a very, very good chapter of My Hero Academia. And I'm kind of hoping we don't get like a part three to this trilogy of just preparing for the culture festival. But we'll see next week when we have chapter 174 come out next week. But I want to hear your guys' thoughts, theories, and opinions on this chapter. Leave them down in the comments below. Why do you think Deku got fired from the dance squad? I really want to know your guys' overall thoughts. And if you guys want to talk about My Hero Academia, Outside of YouTube, feel free to follow me on Twitter, guys. I have a lot of fun as I kind of like live tweet as I read the chapter. I have some fun moments. I like talking with you guys. So if you want to join in on the conversation on Twitter, feel free to follow me, guys. Link in the description below. But I'm super excited for chapter 174 coming out next week. But until then, I'll talk with you guys later. And remember, Plus Ultra!